Um, we do a pretest. If the signal's good, then these aren't required. But if the signal fails in any part of a building, then the fire marshal will require, he will not give you an occupancy permit without it. So basically how it works is there's a Yagi antenna up on the roof. From that antenna, it, it, well, that antenna is pointing right towards the, the donor site, which is usually a macro site, a cell site. Um, these things work off of UHF, they can be either UHF, VHF, 700 or 800 megahertz. Uh, so you have an antenna that's pointing right towards uh, the macro tower, hit by a lightning resistor, and then basically it's just fed half inch cables throughout the whole building with, with some splitters and, and couplers and things like that. Um, let's see here. Uh, the major part, especially when we put these in and there's still construction going on, is that, that uh, these cables don't get damaged. If they get kinked in any way, the antennas won't work. Um, we have seen where we have installed it and then an electrician comes in and just pulls our cable or kinks our cable. They're all uniform in that, that type of cable? Too. Yeah, they're all going to be this, this half inch coax here. And, and basically it's, it's, it's hollow in the center with a, with, a, with a pin right down the middle that does all the communication. So any kind of bend or, or kink, basically the antenna won't work. Um, so this is what actually amplifies the uh, signal to and from the macro site. And this is your, this is where the alarms are held and also the batteries. I believe this unit here, uh, I think you get 24 hours of, of backup power out of this unit. Um, so basically on that second page there I gave you, it's just kind of an overview of what I said. Got your donor antenna at the top, the BDA on this floor, any floor doesn't matter. And donor, the donor uh, antenna on the roof is it's facing the repeater tower and it's just communication back and forth. Um, the next page is just showing uh, this is this building it, itself. It's just a, uh, it shows where the each floor and what's on each floor as far as the, uh, the antennas. Also, with the antennas, I have a little prop here. So basically, this is what the the Yagi antenna looks like. It's gonna. This is just a short version, but it's usually about this much, this this long. Um, Usually we make sure that it's it's there tight, it's, it's, it's on a sled, and usually the weather won't affect it. But there are some times where for whatever reason somebody bumped into it, something hit it, whatever, and it, 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 it fell down or, or whatever. If you know the orientation of where it was, the good thing, the, the one thing to know is this little tube here this, uh, is facing down. Okay. That's the most important part. These antennas that are all around, they're on the antennas, which means the, the, the frequencies and the power that's coming in and out goes in all directions. I don't know if this building has any uh, directional. I think they're all on the here. There's no electronics to these things. They're all manufactured a little different. But these cones decide how it's going to be, how the propagation is of the signal. Again, with these things, they're very easily damaged. If this was dented in any way, it'll, it'll mess up the signal. So I got the egg. So if you wanted to see, this is basically what you're looking at as far as these cables. Uh, this one's an, actually an outside cable because it's full foam. These cables here have this copper outside and there's just a uh, what they call dielectric. It's a little, it's a little thinner. It's just little coils that go around, and this is that center pin. And these are usually the connectors that we use. Um, as you can see here, here's all the different splitters. Splitters usually tell you either they're going to another splitter or they're going to an antenna. It should be all labeled. Uh, as far as uh, we get questions as far as maintenance, there's really nothing that you guys can do. If you get an alarm on one of these, usually it's a service call for us. Um, they will alarm, leave. This one's set up for AC power, 
If that fails, it'll alarm on the, on the panel. Uh, if the battery charger fails, if somehow the donor antenna falls or the donor antenna gets unplugged from the BDA, that'll alarm. Or if there's something blocking the system, you'll get an RF emitter fail. Like I said, but there's nothing you guys can do on site that would, would, would fix it. Apparently, somebody said that, uh, Oh, that somehow this got unplugged. Okay. So it did, it, I think what it did, it did last this 24 hours, and I guess somebody called and said there was an alarm. Yeah. The alarm probably stayed on for another couple hours because the, it, the batteries were completely right. drained. Um, I don't know. It automatically resets itself. Too. Yeah, yeah. If, as long as this is working correctly and no uh, cables were disconnected or anything, once the power came up above, 70%, the alarm will go away. Uh, maybe we could tag this and say, don't, do not touch, because that is an active. Uh, uh, and this, this FPDDA, this is because you have a cellular system here too. This is just the, the, the signal amplifier for the cellular systems. Um, because they do sometimes run on, around the same frequencies, we usually put a filter or blocker on this so that it will not affect any any of the uh, public safety signals. Um, once we commission the system, we do another walk test um, and verify that there's no dead spots in the building because that's the uh, fire marshal will come in, he'll start clicking his radio and if he gets no response, then we gotta do something about it. Is there, right? is there a frequency that uh, we wanna stay off of, like for radio or something? Is there some, any kind of interference we can do with it? Uh, no, these are, if you're using UHF or VHF frequencies, yours are normally um, a little bit in a higher range, a shorter distance. Um, no, we, we usually don't have any problem with interference with, with your guys' radios and things like that. And we don't interfere um, with the cellular signals either. Um, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, uh, the, like the biggest part is sometimes we have people, they get an alarm and they think they can go in there and fix it, yeah. but it's just nothing you can do. It's a lot of it's software based on our computers. So it's something that we need to log into, except for that one where we were getting a battery fail alarm. And that was because it was unplugged. Okay. Yeah. That kind of stuff. I'm sorry. So I'll get a box or a yeah, it's just something. So yeah, so it doesn't come unplugged again. I mean, if it does temporarily, um, what you'll get is an AC power fail, um, and then when the batteries run low, then you'll get the battery fail. So technically, can if you needed to do something, you can be unplugged for a couple minutes, but plug it right back in. But you normally. Once everything's set, there's yeah. no, no need to touch no, it. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if you, I, I know this is a smaller antenna. I know here, that there's so many different manufacturers of antennas. I think I saw a few that they're, they're much larger. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. They all work in the same principle. Like I said, there's no, there's nothing electronic. This is right. just a cable and just generates signal back and forth. You can see the splitters there, so let me show you the splitters. Oh. So me looking at the system right now, it's running perfect right now. No alarms, the batteries are back being charged. Um, Your numbers on the box are tall. Yes, it should be. Jesse, if somebody does unplug that, is there going to be an audible alarm so the maintenance guy will know? If somebody does, yeah, you'll get an AC power failure for roughly 24 hours. Then you'll get an all-out failure. That'd be a, once the batteries go dead, once it gets below 30%, you'll get a, a battery warning alarm. And then once these drain, the whole thing's going to light up. We're going to get every alarm. Yeah. 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 I heard you get a little bit more than 24 hours out of it, but, but, but the, the standard is uh, for these boxes is 24 hours. I do not see, 
a sticker on here with our number. So maybe we can get one shipped to you. Sure. And then just slap it on there as far as. Um, so, any questions? You guys want to walk and look at the antenna or. into the donor antenna or unplugs the system. Other than that, they, they pretty much we, we have them programmed to whatever the county specifies that they're using for signals. And once we verify that it's working, that's it. So uh, we might be out here one more time. Sometimes the fire marshal wants us out here. Yeah. We're testing the alarm. Right. So all we have to do is generate each of the alarms. You verify on the panel, and usually they slap their sticker on there. So, when the alarm goes off, does anybody else receive the alarm? No. These are all these supervisory alarms. No, they're just annoying alarms, so they'll just keep going off. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. So, you're all greened up on everything, so I think this, this, you're good to go on this one. Yeah, give us a call. Yeah, yeah give, give us a call and you know coordinate with uh, Evan or, or Chris when you when you think you're gonna be doing your introduction. And then we'll we'll be right back out to uh, get you guys certified. Get your occupancy permit. Alright. Alright. Appreciate y'all's time.